Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Martine Felton and I am an artist and illustrator. And today I'm going to be talking about some art supplies. Now I did a favorites art supply um, video a few months back and, um, but I wanted to do an updated one because since then, you know, I've really found other art supplies that I really, that I'm reaching for literally almost every day or every time I'm creating. But I'm not saying I don't use those other things that I, that I named in my first favorites video. It's just that these are, um, as I'm getting to know what I like, as I'm getting to know mediums, um, these are really, I feel like what I'm about to show you right now, these are the really the staples that are always going to be in my arsenal of art supplies. So let's get started with um, water-based markers. So let's get, yeah, <laughs> let's get started with some water-based markers. Here are Tombos. Um, I have a couple of sets. I'm not going to pull out all and show you guys all the, the quantities of my markers. I just pulled out a few of each one, each brand that I like, and I'm going to show you. And I'm going to swatch some too. And Tombos were the first water-based markers that I purchased. Um, obviously because I seen some other artists using it and I just really, I like the color payoff. And they were kind of expensive, but not as expensive as other brands, to be quite honest. And there is streaking um, there is some streaking. There can be some streaking. Um, but there are also a few hacks for the streaking. I don't know, um, what the hacks really are. I actually have a video saved where I'm going to be watching. Like, there's no streaking on these colors, but some, like, if you're trying to cover a large area, and you don't want any streaking, um, Tombos, I don't think is really for you. Because when, look, if I were to do, like, I'll try to do a large area like, you know, like this. You see the streaking. You know what I mean? You see that. But when I feel like when you're doing small areas, it's fine. And you're doing it lightly. Um, there's no streaking. But still and all, I use this to get color down. Um, you know, especially in like drawing sessions um, that I do with some of the Patreon, Patreons that I'm a member of. I like to use my Tombos. Another watercolor brand, watercolor marker brand that I really like is Ecoline. Um, these are just a few of the colors that I really, really like, like um, pastel red, which is basically a pink. <laughs> and um, the color payoff with Ecoline is very good as well. And this color is chartreuse, although I don't really feel like it's a real true chartreuse. I feel like this is a chartreuse, but they call this one chartreuse. And I really feel like this one is a really a true chartreuse color, the Tombow. But um, anyway, Ecoline, really good color payoff. The same thing, there can be streaks um, with any marker, really, especially if you're trying to cover a, a big area. 
but what I do is when I don't always I don't use my watercolor markers alone they're usually like the base layer of a drawing and then I go on top with something else like a colored pencil or a crayon or something like that it's just not I don't feel like I think they they're good for the base the foundation but I don't use them alone you can if you want to but my process and my method of illustrating is using them as uh, a base okay so the next brand of watercolor marker that i really love is windsor newton watercolor um these are pro more it says pro oopsie i can't get my camera to focus Focus, focus, there you go. Pro marker watercolor right there. Now these are good. These are very good. See the streaking, but you can go over it and try to lessen the streaks i don't know this color is well this this one that i just laid down is ali zarin crimson hue and this one is i think this is prussian blue pretty sure yeah prussian blue look at that look at that color i really love it and this one is yellow ochre a favorite like look at this yellow ochre it's so close to the chartreuse eco line chartreuse and yeah sometimes with the eco lines you um the cap and the tombos the cap is not like true to what the actual color of the marker is so you have to be careful so when you're buying tombos if you can or eco lines if you can if they if you're buying them like open stock or whatever at blick like i bought these open stock um tombos i bought in sets but eco lines and i bought i buy i buy them open stock this fabric faber castell open stock as well and yes so Another brand that I like is the Faber Castell. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just obsessed with getting my camera to focus because it's like it takes so long. This I love. This is my favorite color from this marker. And this is beige red. Very similar to this one pastel red this eco line pastel red look at that yeah that's why i like it so much um beige red and this is may green Ooh, that is so pretty 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 Okay, so with the and also with the watercolor um, markers, I wanted to show you. You can activate them, use them as literally watercolors. You can spread them around because it's just it's watercolor in marker form. Don't forget that. So you can activate them. See. And uh, let's do this last Prussian blue one. Let's see what I'm talking about. Hmm. And it's still, and the color's still very bright, vibrant. Hey, I want to do this green gold. Now I'm on a roll. <laughs> uh, I love it. Isn't this so beautiful? Let's do this. This is chartreuse to me. I don't care. What nobody said. This is not chartreuse. Okay. So anyway, yeah, so 
those are one of my favorites. Okay, moving on to the next thing. Okay, moving on to my next favorite, which I don't think I featured in the other video, Neo Color 2s, Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s. It looks like I have a lot here, um, but this is not, this is like just the tip of the iceberg as far as the colors that they have available. I have bought these over like the past year or two, open stock at Blick. Um, and I don't know, like, I'm like, should I just have bought the big, the big daddy set? But at the time I was, the big daddy set is really expensive, a couple of hundred of dollars. But also I was like, I don't like, I don't want to buy a set and just like two colors out of it. I was concerned about that. So I bought open stock and, you know, bought the ones that I liked. And the one time that I bought a bunch, they were on sale. One time I caught this crazy sale in store at Blick for these and they were $150 each, okay? And because they're usually, for one is like three and change, three sixty five dollars or something like that. So that is when I really grabbed up the majority of these when I caught that sale. Anyway, I'm telling you, Neo Color 2s are my favorite. I'm just trying to, yeah. Um, my favorites colors here. I love me an ochre, golden ochre. Look at that. I love me an ochre. And another favorite of mine, I'm liking these kind of light pastel -y green colors. This one is Veronese green, and this one is jade green. And I really like how these two greens sit with or sit next to another color that I love is Prussian blue in anything, whether it's acrylic paint, watercolor, crayon, I just love me a Prussian blue. Like this right here, and then another color that I love to, to put with that is the periwinkle together. Like, I love this three color combination. Look at that, look at that, that looks so nice. If you cover it, look, look at that, I love that color palette. So this is Periwinkle Blue, Prussian Blue, of course. Um, I think this one was Jade Green or Veronese. Yeah, this one is Jade Green. But, you know, I like this one, this Veronese Green, just the same. And Ochre, I love me an Ochre. My favorite red, um, which broke, is Scarlet. And another one of my favorites is that apricot. Apricot. And this, I just recently got this. No, these two right here I just recently got, and I love these colors. Um, so this is apricot. And this one is aubergine. And then this one is greenish blue. Yes. I think it's bluish green. It should be bluish green. Um, yeah. So Neo Color 2s are by Karen Dosh as well. Um, no, not as well. Um, by Karen Dosh. And they are water soluble. Another reason why I love these so much is the water solubility because after you put down, after you've drawn or what have you, uh, you can, again, activate them. Turn It turns into paint. You know what I mean? And I love to, once I've uh, made a drawing, I like to go in, once I've made a drawing with the Neo Color 2s, I like to go in and kind of activate you know, the crayon in certain spots. Like I won't 
do everything. I won't activate everything because I still want to keep the texture of crayon, but there are certain spots um, that I'll activate. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. Okay. This is just, I was messing around. Um, but this is a, an interior that I did, right? And so you see how this is all done with Neo Color 2. And this was actually that greenish blue hue that I made the wall. And look, I activated it. But, you know, the table, I made the table black. But, you know, I still kept it as is. And so for some parts, I like to go in and turn it into paint and sometimes leave the crayon texture as it is. Okay, that's really, I finally, like, it just gives it an, uh, another level of character. So I like to do that. That's how I use them. And honestly, I can draw with these all the time, all the time. I love them so much. Okay, so I'm going to move on to ne the next thing. I don't want to stay on the Neo Color 2s for the whole video. Um, this gouache palette. Yes, I do like Karen Dosh a lot. I They are an expensive brand, but if you could catch um, them on sales or on Amazon, not so much at Blick, because Blick barely has anything on sale. But I got this off of Amazon, and this was... I mean, I don't even know if it's authentic. I think it is. Um, looks authentic to me. And it was maybe like $30, as I recall. But anyway, as you can see, I use, I have used this a lot. Um, I'm, hit, I'm about to hit pan on a couple of these colors. But this is a gouache. And the reason why I like this so much, I know it's not, it's, the case is kind of bulky, but you know, you can take it out. I'm having an issue with these nails. I put them on today and I'm like, why did I do this? Cause I work so much with my hands. But anyway, you can take this out, this thing out and it'll be, you know, the case or whatever, or you can take the pans out as well but I don't want to do that right now. But anyway, this is not, for me, this palette is not travel friendly. Um, what the gouache palette I use when I want to take it with me is this one. This is my Stay Moist palette that I have filled with it's a combination, a lot of different, well, not a lot. It's, this is um, filled with Holbein gouache and Holbein and Winsor Newton. So um, this is the little palette I like to take with me if I'm like yesterday when I went to the lake, um, I didn't take gouache with me, but you know, this is something easily that you can throw in your art bag and go. Um, but this is really something that I, I use in studio at home. And let me swatch some of the colors. Let's turn the page. Oh my God, these nails are so cumbersome. What did I do this for? Okay. So... Let's see, this fuchsia. And they can be very opaque. It can be very opaque, you know, depending on how much water. Um, you can make it light, you know. It can be opaque, look. Like the less water, the more intense the color is. And I really like this palette a lot. And you know, you get to your mixing over here, you see I have colors here already mixed. And sometimes I'm like, I have to clean my gouache palette. But then I look, I'm like, no, I need, 
I might need these these mixtures and all you got to do is wet your brush like this blue I made um, it looks like I mixed it with white also this palette came with a brush I don't know where the brush is it's in um, my brush holder and obviously a white gouache but you know you can activate reactivate the gouache and there you have it look at that that's a good blue I think that was just white and um, this blue right here okay so that is that for the Karen Dosh Studio wash palette watercolor pencils my favorites watercolor I love me a water do you see a theme here do you see a theme water soluble huh I just thought about it as I'm doing this I love wash water soluble crayons and watercolor pencils my two favorite brands right now Prismacolor very affordable watercolor this is true blue it's one of my favorite blues when it comes to watercolor pencils true blue sunflower yellow And the red I really like as well crimson red and you know the color payoff as you can see is great and I'm going to hit these with some water of course so yeah the crimson red and it even it like gets brighter when you wa put water on it. That's cool, right? And then the yellow, sunflower yellow. And the true blue. Pretty, right? So this is Prismacolor. The second brand of watercolor pencils that I do really love is, you guessed it, Karen Dosh. Um, the Supra Color Too Soft. That's the that's the name on the pencil. Oh, why do I do this? Anyway, this is what's the name of this color? lemon yellow I'm just gonna swatch a few I'm not gonna hold you this is a good light blue this is I use this a lot for skies bluish pale and I'll swatch one more this one, a good one Let's find a green. This is a good green. This is yellow green. Look at that. That's good for like leaves and grass landscapes. And I'm going to hit these with some water. See? Honestly, I think that the Prisma colors are brighter, have a more of a color payoff than the Karen Dosh, but I still like the Karen Dosh. Um, I have more colors and those two, these two I bought open stock because I didn't wanna buy the set. So, but look at these two. The Prisma color is just pops right in your face, right? 
and that's why it is one of my favorites okay moving on to the next thing pan pastels so I do have a few colors they're all stacked here these things are expensive <laughs> okay but they are awesome and one of these should last you a very very long time I mean if you use this exclusively in your art yes I can see you you know buying more or what have you it running out but I like to use these in my il illustrations as a a first layer a background you know what I mean to create like um, a mood And this one is the Payne's gray color. Let's see, yeah, that's Payne's gray. And this color, I just wanna be sure, um, raw umber. And I really like the effect that it gives with this tool. This, I bought this tool separate um, at Blix. And this one is raw umber. I really like that. Like it gives a nice moody, woodsy type of vibe. And this one is uh, chromium oxide green. Chromium oxide green. Look at that. It's like soft pastels, but in a pan. And, you know, you could spread it around. And you, you can even put water on pastels. I've done it with, past, with the blocks of um, soft pastels and pastel pencils I've done that with. And it kind of sets it. Let's see what... Because I've never used water with the pan pastels. Let's see what happens. It kind of sets it. That's my ex that's been my experience when I've um, put water on the soft pastels, the blocks, and the pencil. And honestly, it kind of sets it, and then it doesn't get everywhere once it's dry. Okay, just a little tip for you. Okay, so that's the color. Another color I have. I want to show you one more color. And this one is um, Burnt Sienna. Yeah. And look at them. They all look so good together. I'm going to put water on the Burnt Sienna as well. Okay, let's let that dry and we'll get back to it and see. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, my next fave is this little thingamabob right here, the art graph. Everybody raves about this. This is water-soluble graphite. Again, do you see the theme here? Water soluble. I love anything water soluble. So this is water soluble graphite. And you can use it anywhere like you want to create shadows or make something dark, background. There's many ways you can use the art graph. And it comes in, in other colors too. I just have the you know the regular one but it ha they have a whole set of colors um i don't really i'm not interested in the colors um because i have the derwent graphite tint pencils which are water soluble and colored so i don't feel like i need um 
co the colored art graph. But this, I take this with me out because it's so cute and cool. So that's how it comes out. Water sol soluble graphite, whenever you want to, let's say if you're doing a still life or, you know, you want to add some shadow, you want to add some darkness to your background, whatever the case may be. Um, this is really handy and it's one of the things that, you know, I reach for all the time, that art graph. Okay, so, so going back to these pastels that I put water on, the green and the sienna, I mean, yeah, it's still getting on my fingers. Oh, my fingers were dirty. Okay, let's use a clean finger. Yeah, it's getting on there, but it's not dusty. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you still need to put fixative on this. Okay, but it's not like crumbly and dusty like it would be if it, you just left it as its own. Like, yes, I am getting, I did get sienna and green on my fingertips just a little. But you, you, as you know, you will need fixative. Like when you're done your art and you use this and everything is final, fixative for sure. But it's not as crumbly and stuff. Like when you put water. My Kuretake. Everybody, all the artists online are going Kuretake mad. It's Kuretake madness out here. And I had these, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but these never, I've, these have never appeared on my channel as of yet. But I had these for quite some time before everybody started getting into these kuratakis because I used to, what is that woman's name? Her watercolor. Like she'll have like three hour long watercolor lives. Oh God. And I can't remember her name and I watch her all the time. But anyway, I was introduced to these um, by a watercolor artist on YouTube. And she had this exact same set. This is 45 colors one two three four five six seven eight it's 40 colors eight times six is 48 <laughs> so this is 48 colors right here and these are the bomb.com okay let me show you why IT. All right, so let's get close here. Like this green. I'm pretty sure that's a sap green or something like that. Anyway, so it has like a watercolor. They call it watercolor, but it really has like a gouache feel to it. It's like in between watercolor and gouache. And then so when it goes down, it really is opaque. So some people call it opaque watercolor. Some people call it gouache. <laughs> um, but the, this is like authentic Japanese watercolor. And obviously if you put more, if you but use more water, let me just, you will get less opaque. You see that? And I really like to use them like this as like a the gouache consistency. Let's do another color, one of my other favorite colors in this palette. Where's my Prussian blue? See, this, a lot of these dark colors, they all look black at first glance. Like, but this is like a eggplant color. Um, this is like, yeah, an eggplant color. And the Prussian blue is in here somewhere. But these are hard to distinguish unless you just have to put your brush in to see 
well, at least for me, what it is. Because they're all dark. But this is a wonderful set. And I got this off of Amazon as well. Um, yeah, look at that. Very opaque, very nice. And it's really great for illustrating. Let me do another color. So I'm coming up on pan on this pink, as you can see. I don't remember using this so much. <laughs> Um, but you can, I heard that you can buy the pans separately. So that's a good thing. So if you need to re up on a particular color, you can do so. And you won't have to buy the whole set. Ooh, look at that. Now tell me that ain't a gouache. Tell me that is not gouache. That is a, that's gouache, B. Anyway. Kiritaki watercolors. This is the 48 set. They ha also have other sets that have less colors. Um, you know, I think there's different themes to the other sets. I'm not sure, but this is the one I got because um, I was willing to spend the money for all of these colors because this was like $40 on Amazon. And for all these colors, I think that was a, a very reasonable price. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that was a very reasonable price. Um, all right. So last but not least, guys, I want to show you ink pens. Now, do I have another piece of paper that I can... You know what? I'm just going to swatch on the other page. There's a little bit more room here. Okay. These ink pens. Um, see, a lot of artists buy like these water, these water brushes and fill them up with ink. And that's fine. I'm just not into the mess and the fuss like i just want i like art supplies that are ready to use and that are easy that you know i can just pick them up and use them on and and then there were concerns some people's um brushes were leaking ink so i just didn't really want i i, I didn't want to take the chance because i was getting ready to do that i was i was getting ready to buy a shit ton of these brushes and fill them up with my liquitex acrylic inks but then i saw these sennelier ink brushes um let me show you hopefully again my camera will focus do, 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 do. there you go ink brush this blue let's see what the name of this color is it's water it says watercolor finish transparency and color intensity blendable water soluble permanent when dry with pigmented base ink there you have it now what's the name what's the color oh here this is cobalt blue so just like the watercolor brush, the Pentel, you just give it a squeeze. When you first get it, you have to squeeze it a lot so um, the ink will come down into this type of well type thing. But then, you know, um, I notice when I do this, a lot of color is not going to come down. You have to be patient and use the tip. See? squeeze and use the tip and paint like like this don't go like this because it's it's going to look like that you know and if you're trying to be precise you know you can be precise because it has a really nice pointy tip so that is cobalt blue of the sennelier inks 
let's show you the green, yellowish green. Ooh, that is so nice, isn't it? And I don't remember where I saw these. I, I saw them in Blick, but I did see another artist use it. I just can't remember. Um, but I was like, ooh, I've got to have those. They already loaded up with ink and I don't have to do much. Yeah. Um, so one more. <laughs> just I keep saying one more, right? I'm going to swatch everything. Okay. Lemon yellow. See? And they just come out so lovely. Let's give you a close up. It's really, really good. Sennelier ink brushes. This is lemon yellow. And um, the set came with six. So those three, and also Burnt Umber, of course, um, Black, Ivory Black, and Primary Red. And I always reach for them. I have them right here next to me. I really like them when you're trying to do a quick wash of something. Um, I wouldn't use them for like big spaces, for that, I would probably use like the regular acrylic inks and just dip my brush in that and do something like that. But um, other ink pens that um, I'm using is the Pentel. Pentel has these ink pens just like the Sennelier, um, but they're like this. And all right, let me take it back a little bit. And um, this one is sepia which was a great color. And the, the tip is really, really pointy, y'all. Look at that. Look at the tip. I love that. And this color is sepia. And it just flows out very nicely. This one is black, of course. Gotta have a black. This one is not flowing out as much as I, oh, because there's none in the well, that's why. Okay. There you go. This one is black. And I have a red and a gray. Those are the four that I have. Let's look at the gray. and the red. That's really bright, right? So I use these together, you know? It's all ink, and I use these together. I've used them together in a couple of drawings that I've made. And one final favorite of mine is this Pitt Oil Base um, Faber Castell Pitt Oil Base Pencil. I really like this pencil, and I'm going to tell you why I like this pencil. For um, I like to outline. Um, a lot of illustrators don't put lines around their shapes or whatever. Um, but I do, and I like to outline. So this, some people use a sepia colored pencil. Some people might use a brown, I mean, a black colored pencil. Either, either one is fine. It's your preference. It's your choice. I like this one because it's really, it's soft, but it's not so soft that it's going to break apart, but it's soft and you can 
it can go on top gouache ink like you see right here it goes on top of these markers really nicely it goes on top of neo color twos so if you wanted to outline whatever you made it goes was this the gouache yeah it go you know it work it plays nice with other mediums and that's why it's oil based oh yeah this was the gouache i think yeah see how smooth this gouache is by the way once it's dried it's really really smooth anyway this pit oil based pencil plays nicely with other mediums and that is why i like it so much all right so that is all for my favorites for now and of course i'm gonna have more favorites coming up in another video <laughs> um but these are the ones that i really wanted to share with you all and if you've had any experiences or any tips and tricks with any of these products let me know in the comments let me know what you think what is your favorite out of what i've shown here um, because it's always good. I really like to hear about or see um, the materials that other artists use and how they use them in their process and how they layer things. It's really interesting to me um, how everyone's process, you know, comes out. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and go down in the description bar and subscribe to my Substack newsletter. I put out a weekly newsletter of just my art journey and um, what I do weekly on in my sketchbooks and just what I'm going through and my journey in becoming an illustrator. Okay, so I want to thank you all for watching like the video do all that cool youtube stuff so the algorithm can like me and i will see you guys in the next video take care